Hello, my name is Afradi Salmon Mjagi from Adikaya, Tanzania. Uh, welcome in a history two class from six. Uh, we are proceeding with our topic, which is uh, the lies of socialism. Uh, as you remember, students of form six on the last session we ended on the significance of the Russian Revolution of October 1917. So now we are going to see the. I mean, we ended. Sorry, uh, we ended on the leadons that gave uh, the lies of USSR as the leading socialist country in the world. So today we are going to see the uh, the fall or collapse of Soviet uh, Union and the communist bloc factor for the. I mean, the fall or collapse of Soviet Union and the communist bloc or factors for the decline of Russia. Uh, it means that we are going to see what were the factors that led to the collapse of uh, communist bloc or factors for decline of Russia. Uh, the decline of Russia as the socialist hegemon was due to the political and economic factors for the late of 1918s. There was due to the socialist crisis which was seen on the wind of in Russia. Uh, so these political and economic changes swept East and Europe, uh, including Russia from the late in the 19 uh, from the late of 1918 to early 1919. Hence it was the last Soviet leader known as uh, known as Mikhail Gorbachev. Uh, uh, Mikhail Gorbachev, uh, where policies accelerated uh, the fall of communism in Russia. It means that the decline of Russia as a socialist hegemon was due to the political and economic factors uh, for the late of 1918. It means that there are different political and economic problems that faced Russia in, 18, in 1980 that necessitated the collapse of Russia. And this was due to the socialist crisis, uh, which was seen on the wind of Russia. Uh, so these political and economic changes uh, swept Eastern Europe, including uh, Russia from the late of 1918. Uh, and to early of 1990, uh, that marked the total collapse of Russia as the socialist bloc. And it was during the leadership of a Soviet leader known as uh, Mikhail Gorbachev, who had uh, the policies which contributed much to the fall of communism in Russia. And thus, in 1990, was the total uh, decline of the USSR or Russia. So let us see the reasons for the collapse of uh, Russia. The first one was the interference of democracy and the violation of human rights by the Communist Party with one political party. And this led people to be discouraged with one political party, a uh, political party, uh, or communist, as they started to ask for freedom of independence in different small nations from USCLA. For example, during the looting of Gorbachev or Mikhail Gorbachev, people were not allowed to oppose the government and I mean oppose the government even to give out their social opinions on how to develop USCLA. It means that the reason that led to the collapse of USCLA, it was among of them was interference of democracy and the violation of human rights by the communist party with one political party. mean that uh, after the Russian Revolution, uh, USSR was uh, led by the uh, single political party, whereby Bolshevik party was the, uh, was, the political part, uh, was the political party or ruling party that was uh, dominating Russia. And during the Mikhail Gorbachev uh, leadership, it mean that there was the mass violation of human rights and the democracy to me that people had no right uh, to argue or 
uh, to suggest anything towards the ruling government and that's uh, and that's why people were decided to raise and uh, to demand for democracy and the uh, human rights that we have related with the uh, Gorbachev uh, leadership or Gorbachev uh, lane. So in one way or another that's marked the, the collapse of this integration of USSR as a small nation in Russia, I mean in the USSR started to demand for freedom or independence uh, and that led to the collapse of USSR. Another was stagnation of the economy. To me that the stagnation of the economy, uh, science and technology due to the over-centralization and the over-monopolization of the economy by the states. To me that after the Russian revolution, it means that uh, the economy of Russia was centralized on the ends of the states. And the science and technology was uh, conservative, it means it was not changing. So the production, the production and the demands of the, I mean the, the demands and the, yes, uh, another factor for the collapse of USSR was the stagnation of the economy, science and the technology due to the over-centralization and over-monopolization of the economy by the states. We can see that after the Russian Revolution, uh, the economy, science and technology was centralized uh, and monopolized by the states. To me, the state economy was centralized uh, under the, uh, the states. And this led to the limitation of the competition that could help the economy to grow. Therefore, Russia was to be weak economically and had no support to other socialist countries. To me, that uh, the centralization of the economy of the state, uh, in the, I mean, in the centralization of the economy to the state, uh, was not allowed the competition in the production, and that uh, led to the weak. The, the economic, the weak of economy and uh, the lack of support of the other socialist countries to Russia and that led to the collapse of, of, of USSR. Another factor was the emergence of the two policies introduced by Mikhail Gorbachev. It means the emergence of the two policies uh, introduced by Mikhail Gorbachev, I mean Mikhail Gorbachev, these were Perestroika and Glasnost. These two policies of Mikhail, the last president of USSR, uh, accelerated the collapse of the former USSR. It means that these two policies uh, were the main contributors to the collapse of USSR. That were uh, that were brought by the last USSR president, so-called Mikhail Gorbachev. Uh, as we can see that Glasnost uh, was uh, concerning with opens for democratic uh, process and the decision to be undertaken by the Russian masses. So when Mikhail Gorbachev, Mikhail Gorbachev introduced the Glasnost, all the 15 states of the former Soviet Union decided to declare independence individual. It means that the policies that were brought by the last USSR president Mikhail Gorbachev called the uh, Glasnost and Pestroike, it means that Glasnost uh, were aiming at opening for democratic process and decision to be under the masses of, of Russia. And thus, uh, the introduction of that policy by Mikhail Gorbachev, uh, the 15 states of the former Soviet Union decided to, decla to declare the independence individual and they started to depend themselves uh, without uh, combining others. And the uh, second uh, policy that was called the Perestroika. Uh, was the policy of Gorbachev intended for the restriction of economy by introducing to Russia for free market economy, uh, which was a pure capitalist economy, 
uh, this undermined the socialism because uh, instead because of because instead of the government to control the economy as it was uh, during Lenin and other Mikhail allowed uh, I mean I mean Perestroika was the policy of Gobati have intended for the institution of the economy by introducing to Russia of free market economy. It means that Gobati have come up with that policy in order to ensure there is a free market economy in Russia. And that was the pure capitalist uh, economy. And this undermined the socialism to take place because instead of the government to control the economy, as it was during Lenin and other leaders, uh, Mikhail Gorbachev allowed the private ownership of properties, and the 15 states uh, opted, opted out or divided it to withdraw uh, from the former USSR. For example, Ukraine, Georgia, Lithuania, Yugoslavia, the Slovakia, and the Russia were uh, declined or divided each other in order to remain independent and to this and to collapse or to move on from the USCCLA and that led to the total collapse of USCCLA. Another was the reduction of budget in army. It means that the army budget was reducted. I mean it was reduced. Uh, I mean the government of Gorbachev in Russia reduced the budget of army. For example, the number of soldiers recruited and trained was reduced. This was made USSR to lose the powerfulness. It means the power of USSR was uh, decreased as the number uh, of soldiers to be recruited and trained was reduced during the leadership of Mikhail Gorbachev. And uh, industries necessary for manufacturing of weapons was uh, minimized. All this reduced the ability of Russian army uh, for a large extent and ex accelerated to its uh, collapse. It means that uh, the government of Gorbachev has followed the reduction of uh, the number of soldiers to be recruited and trained as were well, reduced, as well as industries that were necessary for manufacturing of weapons was declined or decreased. And this reduced the ability or the powerfulness of Russian army for a large extent and that accelerated or contributed to the collapse of USSR in the early 1990s. Another was the disintegration and the collapse of communist states in Eastern Europe. To me that the disintegration and the collapse of communist states in Eastern Europe which took place between one state with another, withdrawing from the former USSR. This happened when Gorbachev gave freedom to, the, to them, it means 15 states that were forming USSR, like Yugoslavia, the Slovakia, Ukraine, uh, Georgia, it means that those all states that were forming USSR were given the freedom by Mikhail Gorbachev to get their independence and to choose whether to stay or not to stay within the former USSR Union. And that freedom gave those states to withdraw from the Union of United Socialist, I mean it's United Soviet Socialist Republic. Uh, among the states which pulled out were Georgia, Ukraine, Yugoslavia, etc. in the area of, in the area of uh, 25th December in 1991, in 1991, and that led to the collapse of USCR. So these all were the, the reasons that gave the collapse of USCR in the area of 1990s. Uh, so let us see the lesson that African uh, learned from Russian revolution. The lesson that African uh, learned or learned from Russian revolution. Uh, the first one was uh, building building of socialism does not wait for capitalism to mature. This is really some African socialism. To mean that uh, the lesson that Africans learned from Russian revolution was. Uh, in order to build socialism, 
uh, does not wait or does not mean to wait until capitalism to become mature uh, and thus influenced some African socialism to take place. Also, it gave a lesson that may, I mean, may progressive change in any country can be brought about by the indigenous people themselves and not outsiders or foreigners, as it was indigenous people of Russia during socialist revolution that gave the uh, the rise of socialism in Russia. So the African peoples uh, decided to make the unit themselves are the indigenous in order to make the changes in the country as the indigenous Russians did during the Russian social I mean Russian Revolution or Socialist Revolution of October 1917. Also another lesson it gave uh, the lesson that unfit leaders or corrupt leaders from the power by force or violence can be overflowed. It means that yeah, the lesson that they got from the Russian Revolution uh, to me that the unfit readers or corrupt readers uh, must be removed from the power by using the force or violence. It means that it means uh, from power by force or I mean it gave the lesson that unfit readers or corrupt readers uh, from power uh, by force or violence can be overthrown. It means that it gave the lesson to Africans that those leaders who came into power by using force or violence must be overthrown or overthrown. Another lesson, it gave a lesson that in any struggle, efficient and committed leadership is needed. And this helped much during African liberation struggle. It means that the Russian Revolution gave the lesson to the Africans uh, that uh, uh, during the any struggle, uh, efficient and committed leaders uh, is needed or are needed, and this will help. Uh, and this will help to achieve the goals, or uh, uh, I mean, to achieve the goals which have been planned to be achieved at a certain period of time. And this helped much during African liberation or African struggle for independence. Another, the united efforts of the peasants, workers, and soldiers uh, can bring meaning changes in the society. To mean that another lesson that was uh, given to the African from Russian Revolution was uh, the, uni the union uh, of the united efforts of the peasants, uh, workers, and the soldiers uh, can bring meaning changes in the society as the Russians did. As you can see that the soldiers who were not given what they promised during the uh, Russo-Japanese War of 1903 to 1905 uh, were discouraged by the existing government of, of uh, Tsar Nicholas II and thus uh, was decided uh, to support the emerging leaders like, uh, like uh, Vladimir Ilyich Lenin and the peasants who were ready for changes in the society and that the Africans learned the lesson from that Russian revolution. But also the violent uh, socialist revolution in, involved bloodshed as it was in Russia and this was avoided uh, by African countries which decided to build African socialism by peaceful means, for example Tanzania, Zambia and Ghana. To mean that Violent socialism revolution involved bloodshed or involved the bloodshed as it was in Russia, and this was avoided by Africans or African countries. To mean that the uh, the Russian revolution uh, was involved the bloodshed, but the lesson that they got as Africans, they avoided the use of bloodshed and they decided to build socialism by using the peaceful method or peaceful means, for example Tanzania or Tanganyika by that time under Julius Kambalage Nyelele, uh, Zambia and Ghana under uh, Kwame Nkrumah. Another lesson, it's gone a lesson, or it, I mean it's good, it's good, it's good a lesson on that uh, socialist revolution take place in an industrialized country. To me, that African country or African countries got a lesson on that socialist revolution 
take place in the and in the slightly uh, countries. Also, African learned that capitalism is an evil which bear on the exploitation of the proletariat class. Proletariat through provision of raw wages, provision of low wages, low wages and long working hours. To mean that Africans or African countries learned the lesson that uh, capitalism is an evil, uh, an evil system and which bear on the all which rely on the exploitation of working class or proletariat class through provision of low wages and the uh, increasing long I mean increasing working hours to the workers either in industries or in plantations. So all these were the we, these were the lessons that the Africans, African countries got from Russian Revolution. So let us so let us see the let us see socialism in the third world countries. Uh, socialism in the third world countries. Uh, it means that uh, after the Russian Revolution or as uh, socialism was studied in Russia, uh, socialism was spread to other countries, uh, especially in third world countries. So that's the another subtopic which we are going to, to deal with. This is socialism in the third world countries. And these countries adapted socialism in their countries due to the following reasons. For example, Cuba in 1959, North Korea in 1948, North Vietnam in 1970s, Nicaragua, etc., were adapted to socialism. What were the reasons for those third world countries to adapt to socialism? These countries adapted to socialism in their countries due to the, I mean, the reasons that made those countries to adapt to socialism was uh, they were supported by Russia during the struggle for independence. So after the independence, they added to force socialism like what was followed in Russia. To mean that the first reason that made third world countries follow USLR or socialism uh, was to mean that those third world countries received the assistance or support from Russia. And that's why after their independence, they decided to support Russia as, we are, they, as uh, she was practicing uh, socialism and that's why socialism become dominant in those third world countries that gained the uh, support from USCLA or Russia. Also another reason for adoption of socialism in third world countries was they were against the colonialism, imperialism and the western capitalism. So they had to force socialism which was the system against colonialism and imperialism. It means that those third world countries uh, were against the colonialism, imperialism, and Western capitalism, so that they added to force socialism, uh, which was the system against the, uh, colonialism and imperialism that made the third world countries uh, to fall or to adapt to socialism in their respective countries. Another reason was revolutions in those countries were led by communist political movements supported by peasants and workers. Under such situation, the government in the third world countries had to follow socialism. To mean that the revolutions in those countries were led by communist political movements supported by peasants and workers. And under such situation, the government in the third world countries had to follow socialism because even Russia were usually uh, those peasants and the workers as well as soldiers in order to support the revolutions and that's why the third world country's government decided uh, to force socialism. Another reason for the third world countries to force socialism was uh, most of those nations were poor economically. They believed that the underdevelopment of those nations were caused by humiliation and exploitation of the capitalism, of the capitalist ideology which led to the capitalism in Europe to benefit from the resources of this nation. And they, had, they have to follow socialism, which was the system which could bring equality in the society. 
It means that the most of the of those nations uh, were poor economically, and they believed that the underdevelopment of their nations were caused by the humiliation and the exploitation uh, of the capitalist ideology, which led uh, by capitalism uh, in Europe to benefit uh, to benefit from the resources of the uh, third world countries. And that's why they added to fall the socialism, uh, which was the system which could brought uh, equality within their society. And that made the third world countries to fall socialism in their country as they adapted from Russia. Also, Russia helped the third world countries, helped the third world countries both materially and the moral support. For example, Russia provided the ideological support uh, during the struggle for independence, offered military and economic support to the third world countries, for example, food, money, weapons, hence they have to follow socialism. It means that during the nationalistic struggle or uh, independence struggle, it means that those uh, uh, third world countries were good assistance or support morally and materially from Russia and the socialist countries. So after getting their independence, uh, they started or they decided to form the uh, socialism ideology as the, uh, as the system of government or as the system of, of governing. And that made the third world countries to form socialism uh, in their countries. Also, in the UN, Russia also supported the decolonization of all third world countries in order to end imperialism, colonialism, and with their evils like oppression, humiliation, segregation, and exploitation of third world countries. And they are, they are to force socialism. To me, that even during the international conferences or international organizations that were conducted under United Nations, and the other international meetings to mean that Russia was the frontier line uh, to ensure that uh, she is uh, representing the third world countries uh, from the uh, colonial masters who were exploiting them, uh, humiliating them, uh, segregating them under uh, uh, colonialism and the imperialism. And thus, uh, after the uh, getting their independence, those third world countries, they added to fall socialism because socialism was the, uh, the proper and the better system of administration that was bringing units uh, in the society. And that's why it made the third world countries to fall socialism. Also, uh, the building of Rumumba University for provision of uh, provision of scholarship to students from the third world countries to go and study in Russia where these students could be trained skilled workers and specialized specialists in Russia. This led to the third world countries to follow socialism. Uh, it means that uh, uh, it means that the building of the Lumumba University provision of scholarship to students uh, from the third world countries to go and to go and study in Russia, where these students could be trained, uh, skilled, could be trained, skilled workers and the special, specialized specialist in Russia, and this led to the third world countries to fall socialism. As we can see that uh, Russia was providing a scholarship to the third world country students, and go in Russia and study and get skills and knowledge about socialism. And that's once they turned back in Africa, they, I mean, once they turned back in the third world, in their third world countries, uh, they spread the goods, the, the good or the good deeds that were made or done by the Russians, and that's why the African or the third world country leaders uh, decided to force socialism, as socialism was believed as uh, the good. Uh, system of uh, 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 the good system of production and the governing, and that's why the third world countries are decided uh, to form uh, a socialist, uh, socialist uh, idea, ideology. 
So I would like to give you the exercise uh, which has uh, the one question. And the, that question is explain, uh, explain the factors Explain the factors for the collapse for the collapse of USCLR. And the second one is is assess assess the lessons got by Africans Africans from Russian revolution. It means that uh, according as we have ended or we have got the end of our lesson, I would like to give you the exercise which has two questions. And the first one is explain the factors for the collapse of the Cellar. The second one is assessing the lessons got by Africans from the Russian revolution. So I want to thank you for listening to me and I would like to uh, welcome you in the next station, in the next station for more learning uh, 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 from Educare Tanzania. Uh, uh, I thank you for listening uh, our station uh, from the beginning to the end. So welcome again. Thank you.